So this next part, we're going to now describe our data for quantitative data. So now our, our results are numerical and we can get meaningful results from our data. Now we're going to go ahead and use quantitative data from here on out. We're going to find measures of central tendency, me measures of variation, or the spread, looking at the spread in the center of our data. There's only one other time we'll talk about categorical data, and that's with the mode, and that's with the discussion with the center of our data. But other than that, I mean, we're, we pretty much like using quantitative data. And if our data is categorical, we tend to rewrite it as quantitative, right? We call the GPA issue where we want to determine the grades and measure grades, but grades are letters, they're categorical. So we rewrite it as points, right? An A is four, a B is three, a C is two, and we can calculate a weighted grade, which is a GPA. So um, the, these are going to be techniques that we would use all the time in statistics for quantitative data. So I just went ahead and gave 16 randomly selective weights and pounds of models from a generic model agency. And so we can go ahead, the first type of thing we're going to visualize is a table, right, of a frequency table. So we can actually construct a frequency table for quantitative data too. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing we want to do again to make a frequency table is to go ahead and have a rectangle. I'll try to do this like that. You want a header and then you'll need some categories. So we can go ahead and make the relative frequencies column and frequency column on top of our category column. So here is the weight, that's the category we're doing, and then two more columns for relative frequency. Okay, so I'll put frequency frec and then rel frec here, and then weight in pounds. Okay, so the weight, I would go ahead and organize it so it goes low to high because we want to see it kind of nice like that. So I would look at 85, then 98, 100, 110, 115, and 138. Let me do go ahead and make a total column. I already know what the total is. They told me that I have 16 frequencies, 16 weights. And my relative frequency, always remember, it should always be about one right? 100%. So how many 85s do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 98, 1, 2, 2, 100s, 1, 110s, 1, 2, 3, 4, 115, 1, 2, 3, and 2, 138s. If I count them up, I get 4 plus 2 is 6, 7, 11, plus 5 is 16. The relative frequency, again, would be the proportion. There are four models that are 85 pounds out of 16. Two out of 16 are 98 pounds. One out of 16 is um, 100 pounds. Four out of 16 are 110 pounds, three out of 16 are 115, and two out of 16 are 138. Four sixteenths I can do in my head, but I, put, I would put it in the calculator if I needed to. It's a quarter. Two sixteenths is one eighth, and that's half of a quarter, so 0.125. One sixteenth I can't divide that far, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in the calculator. One, just 1 divided by 16 and 0 0.0625. What's nice is that they are terminating decimals, so they're not repeating or going on forever. So I can just put exactly what it is. This is the same as the first cat, uh, row, so 0.25. 3 sixteenths 
we can put in the calculator and get 0.1875 and 2 sixteenths is the same as the second row, so 0.125. And if I added these all up, they would be exactly one in this case. Okay, so we kind of get the we kind of have the hang of that. So the next thing we did when we had categorical data, recall we did a bar chart. So let's go ahead and do the same, but for quantitative data. A bar chart for quantitative data is actually called a histogram. So it's just a little different language, but essentially the same thing. And we call bar chart histograms. We just we know what we're talking about when we say it. So a histogram is going to be essentially a bar chart, but for quantitative data. The reason why because the reason why it's called something different is because in math, when it looks different, it is different. And so if the data looks different, then the bar chart will look different. And the difference will be not that they're bars, because they're all bars, but that the bars will be touching. Okay, so we're going to have the bars touch. If we want to construct a histogram of the model's weights, we can. So here, um, we're going to take this table here and draw a histogram down below. So let me go ahead and copy and paste this table. And that way it's easy to construct. So if I do um, the histogram, and I could do um, the frequency or relative frequency, when it doesn't specify in our problem, we assume it's going to be the, the frequency. In this case, we're going to go ahead and put weight in pounds. And we're going to go ahead and look at our frequencies and choose an appropriate tick marks for our, our vertical axis here. Frequencies go there, and we can see the highest frequency is 4. So don't take it out to 100, OK? So frequencies are the number of models that are in that weight category. So in this case, there are four models that are in the 85. So I would just do, I would just do four tick marks. So here is one, two, three, four, and these are going to be the frequencies. Okay, so the weight in pounds, uh, because we're given just weights by themselves, it's going to be similar to the colors where we're going to have 85 here, so 85, 98, 100, 110, 115, and 138. Again, we're going to draw the bars touching and um, and according to the height of the, you know, with the frequency, the height will be the frequency. So for the first one, the frequency is 4 for models that weigh 85 pounds. So it'll look like this. Now, there are two models that weigh 98 pounds. So my height would be 2. But notice I'm going to go ahead and touch the rectangles. So notice that they're touching right here. Now, I don't. it's hard for me to make the same size. I'm sure you're a much better artist than I am. So just do your best. But the bar should just be touching. And then there was one model at 100 pounds. So I'm just going to draw it like this. Uh, four models at 110. So it's going to go pretty high. So maybe draw it like that. And then maybe skinny it up. There we go. Um, three models at 115. Those are always a little easier when it's not as tall. And then 138, two models. 
So I'm able to do with my iPad is kind of resize it and so it looks a little nicer. But essentially all the difference is, is that the bars will be touching. Why? Because 85, 86, 87, 88, 98, they all go in sequence. They all blend together. They're not categories. Weight is continuous, right? I can be 102.1 pounds, right? So 155.6 uh, pounds, right? Okay, and then if you wanted to, you could put the numbers on top, like 4, 2, 1, four three two it's up to you but this is suffice again we don't really do these by hand we let technology do all the, all the hard work the next part is going to be grouped data so notice in this table we were just listed the pieces of data but in this next uh, section we're gonna see that we have a lot of data we have 36 students it's, we're not going to draw a column of 36 pieces. We're going to go ahead and group them together. And so grouping them together just, look, just minimizes the amount of data we're looking at on a table. So in order to do that, there, is, there are some, it's some criteria. So we want to keep it to 5 to 20 classes. Um, and then we also want to make sure that each class is equal in size. So if the first class will be 120 to 129, then that means the next one should be 130 to 139. So notice that if I took the difference between 120 and 130, that would be 10. Or the difference between the upper and lower class is the same, and that would be 9. So either way, these values, the lower class limits should be, the difference should be the same, or the difference within the class limit also has to be the same. They should be equal all the time. The larger of the two values here, this is the called the upper class limit. The smallest of that class is called, or the minimum we call the lower class limit. Then we want to make sure that it contains all of our data. How do we choose a class? Like how do I know that it's going to be nine and I'm going to get all 36 of my data in there? Well, there is a short little quotient for that. And so it says if you actually know all of these parameters but one, we can always find the other. So if we know the raw data, we'll just take the difference between the largest and small data and then divide that by either the number of class intervals I want, or if I already know what my class range is, which is that value, then I, I can divide by that. I can play with these numbers, right? But essentially, we do want a target number of classes, right? So we're going to usually divide this difference by the number of classes we want. Let's go ahead and apply this. So in this example 910, the total cost of textbooks for the term was collected from 36 students. Create a frequency table with eight class intervals. So I have eight, I should have eight here. And then um, construct a histogram. So we need this first. So if we do that, the first thing we need to determine is the class uh, range. So we know that the class range, we can do over to the side, is going to be the largest value that a student spent on textbooks. We notice that these are in order. Notice that 140 is the minimum and it increases as we go left to right and the largest amount that student spent was 460. So 460 minus 140, and I'm going to highlight these numbers so then you can see that they're right here. And I was told I wanted eight class intervals. So I'm going to go ahead and divide by eight. And once again, the class range is this fraction here. So let me go ahead and they all are going to be yellow highlighted. If I did this in the calculator, I can go ahead and do that here and do 460 minus 140 and divide that by 8. I get 40. So 40 will be my class range. 
meaning that the difference between the low and high is going to be 40. So I would start at the minimum value, 140. I'm going to highlight that. There you go. And complete the class range. So 140 plus 40 is the upper class limit in the first class, which is 180. Now, because everything is given us in whole dollars, notice there's no cents, we actually don't have to worry about cents. We go with the flow of our data. That's very important we understand that. And so if our data is whole dollars, then I'm just going to keep whole dollars. So the next whole dollar uh, past 180, $180 is $181. And I'm gonna go ahead and add 40, because that's the class range, and get um, 221. The next whole dollar is 222 and add 40 to get the upper limit of that class. So that'll be 262. The next dollar is 263, add 40, so that would be 303. The next dollar is 304, add 40, 344. Next dollar is 345, and then add 40, so 385. 386 is the next dollar, add 40, and it is 426. The next one will be 427, and then add 40, and it's 467. Notice that from the lowest minimum value, it is included in these class intervals. All the way to the largest, 460, it's in this last class interval. We need to make sure that when we do the class range, that's why we use the lowest and largest value of our data set, because we want to be able to be inclusive and include our entire data set. Okay, and then notice if you subtract the upper limit from the lower limit, it's 40, right? 40, 40, 40, 40, all the way down. Okay, so let's go ahead and just count now. So how many um, pieces of data between 140 and 180 dollars? So let's just go ahead and count one, two, three, four, five. So notice we're going to include that 180. From between 181 and 221, so one. Between 222 and 262, so one, two, three, four. Between 263 and 303, so 263 and 303, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's a big one. Between 304 and 344, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There's our peak, right? 345 to 385, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then 386 to 426, so that would be 1, 2, 3. Uh, no, that's not right. From 386 to 426, so 1, 2. And then 427 to 467, we can see, is only two, the 460s. Great. Okay, so why do I have this column here? I know you're asking the midpoint column. Okay, so the midpoint column is what we're going to use for these tick marks. With group data, we can either use midpoints. So let me write here. So oops, with group data... We use midpoints on 
the um, tick marks or the lower class limits. Um, and we could get really in depth into this, but we're not a statistics class. We're just trying to get your feet wet. So in our case, we're just going to go ahead and use midpoints. And that's why I have this column here. So let's go ahead and find the midpoints to each class. Um, how we do that is essentially find the midpoint. <laughs> so all we need to do is find the middle between 140 and 180. And we can do this by um, adding, well, you know, finding the average or the median. So we'll go ahead and just find the midpoint between these two. And the midpoint's going to be 180. So for the first class, we'll do 180 plus 140 and then divide by 2. And so if we did that in the calculator, so let's do 180 plus 140, okay, and then divide by 2, we get 160. So then the next one would be 221 plus 181 divided by 2, and so we'll do 181 plus 221. So we're adding the endpoints. We're adding the lower class limit and the upper class limit of each class, then dividing by 2. And we get 201. You'll notice there's some sort of pattern that's happening here, right? You can see from 160 to 201 is 41. That's the difference. I bet you the next one's going to be 242. But let's go ahead and just do it for good measure. 262 plus 222 oh, divided by 2. So now let's go to our calculator. We have 262 plus 222 and divide it by 2. And it's 242. So notice here that there is a difference of 41 between each class. So I can go ahead and assume that the next class is going to be 283, right? Because it's going to be a 41 difference. So notice that there's a pattern here, and you should notice the pattern. So let's go ahead and write them in. 242 plus 41 would be 283. 283 plus 41 is going to be 324. Add 41 will be 365. Add 41 would be 406. And then add 41, which will be 447. OK, so we're going to use these. Oops. As our tick marks. Okay, let's go ahead and put them on. Here's 160, 201, 242, 283, 324, 365, 406, and 441. Uh, I'm sorry, 7, 447. Again, these are our midpoints, so we're going to draw the bars around the tick mark and touching. Okay, the frequencies, though, we notice that the largest frequency here is 9. So let's label each one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, one tick mark each. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven, eight, nine. And notice that these frequencies represent the number of students that paid between $140 and $180 for textbooks. So they do represent the number of students. So 160 had a frequency of five. So then I would just draw a rectangle. They're going to be pretty narrow. That. 
the next class had only one student, so it's going to look like that. The 242 had four students. Okay, I hope you were able to do something like that. Um, I did my best, right? Um, <laughs> okay, so that's what the histogram looks like. And um, again, we can use lower class limits or midpoints. We you will use midpoints here in this class.